In this video I'm going to discuss switch debouncing, explain the problem and implement a solution for a single pole double throw switch or slider switch. In the next video I will explain and implement a solution for a single pole single throw switch such as a push button. I suppose the first question has to be why do we need to worry about debouncing? Well switch bouncing is a problem that affects us when we start to discuss sequential circuits in particular. It's a physical problem that we have in the real world. In theory, when we move a switch or press a button, we assume that there's an instantaneous change in state. But this is not the case in reality. When we press a button like a light switch, the button presses, but when it hits the contact, it bounces in the air due to its mass, just like any type of physical collision. It's only a tiny bounce in the air, but it breaks the contact for a very short amount of time, and will continue to break the contact repeatedly for a number of milliseconds. Milliseconds doesn't seem like a long amount of time, but when modern microprocessors are operating at gigahertz, even at one gigahertz that's more than one million operations in a single millisecond. So obviously something like a computer keyboard was used without some form of debouncing, a single key press would result in many key presses being received. Now, even with sequential so so circuits that we use, such as a flip-flop where it's positive or negative edge triggered, a signal that is bouncing around will generate many false triggers. I will discuss two types of switches, single pole, single throw, which is SPST, and single pole, double throw, which is SPDT switches. I have cho chosen these two types of switches because they're popular switch types. A SPST switch is a simple switch where the two terminals are either connected together or disconnected from each other, a short circuit or an open circuit. A SPDT switch has a common that is either connected to one pole or the other pole. A momentary push button is an example of an SPST switch. These can either be normally open or normally closed. The most common push button is normally open, where the switch is open circuit until you press a button and contact is made. The normally closed push button is less common and behaves the opposite way. An example of an SPDT switch is a simple two position slider switch. When you wire your first switch you might be tempted to wire it like this so that when the button is pressed it connects our 5 volt or high to our output. But when we release the button we have a problem. The problem is that the output is not low or connected to ground, rather it is floating. If we were to tie this line to ground directly we would also have a problem because when we press the button we would have a short circuit. That is, the 5 volt line point will be connected directly to ground with no load element, which is always a problem. We can fix this by either using a pull down or pull up resistor. In this case I'm using a pull up resistor which means that when the button is not pressed, the current flows through the pull up resistor to the circuit, giving a high input. When we press the button, ground is connected to the output and it is not a short circuit because the resistor is in place. We use as high a resistor value as is possible, in this case a 10k ohm resistor, to give a weak pull up, which minimizes power used when the button is pressed. So now that we have our circuit we need to deal with the bounce. When a button is pressed the button bounces in the air giving an actual output like that in red in the figure. So all mechanical switches suffer from bounce where the button bounces in the air a little when the switch makes contact and it does this only for a short amount of time. We could use a switch like a mercury till switch or some other closed switch where the contacts are always made. We could also use a switch that wipes or swipes or we could solve this using additional circuitry. In this video I will look at debouncing a single pole double throw switch using an SOR latch. In the next video I'll explain how to debounce a single pole single throw switch using an RC pair and a Schmidt trigger. This is the circuit that I've built to debounce the single pole double throw switch. Here's my switch and here's my logic gates. This is a 7400 so it's a quad NAND gate, two input NAND gate. In this case here, here's my switch and you can see both poles are connected via resistors uh, to plus 5 volts so these are two pull up resistors are connected as in the figure. And I've remained consistent with the colouring in the figure and the colouring of this uh, of the connections on the IC and all through the circuit. Here you can see that one side of the switch is running into the input of the first NAND gate. The second side of the switch to the purple wire is running as an input into the second NAND gate. The output 
of the second NAND gate is feeding into the second input of the first NAND gate and the output of the, set of the first NAND gate is our output of our circuit as well as feeding into the input of the second NAND gate. So this circuit works, I've wired up a simple uh, LED just to check that we're getting our output. So this works correctly, we should have an output of 5 volts here when we turn the switch. So at the moment the switch is off, if I put the switch on we get our LED lights up, LED goes off. So the circuit works as a regular <laughs> circuit to light an LED. Now obviously we don't need to debounce the circuit just to light an LED, but if this output here, this point here, was the input to a microcontroller, um, well, well, we'll prove that this circuit has been debounced and we'll do that using the oscilloscope. But first let's look at how this circuit works. You'll see in the centre of the figure that we have an SR NAND latch or SR bar NAND latch. It's an SR bar NAND latch because it's created with NAND gates rather than NOR gates which would give us the uh, same effect um, but we would use active high instead of active low inputs. With an SR NAND latch you can see the truth table for this on the right hand side. When we apply 0, 1 as our set and reset bar values we get a value of Q is equal to 0. So to set, if we set set bar low, we get an output of Q of 0. When we have set bar and reset as 1, 0, we get an output for Q of 1. We can kind of ignore the Q bar column in this case because we're not actually using it in, uh, for our particular example. If we apply a 1, 1 input, and this is very important, if we apply a 1, 1 input, we're in latch state, which essentially means that we remember the last state that we currently had. So 1-1 one, one is the important uh, configuration that we need. And for that reason, I've used pull-up resistors on the green and purple wires. These pull-up resistors mean that we are applying a 1-1 one, one input as the default situation. But let's go through it in order of the sequence. So if we start in our initial position, the switch is at the top, it's connected to the green wire. We have S bar is equal to zero as the input to this particular case. So we've grounded S bar, which means we're putting in zero. In the same situation, the pull-up resistor on the purple wire brings R bar to be equal to one, which means that the input to our NAND latch is zero, one. And as highlighted in red on our truth table, this means that we get an output of Q is equal to zero, or low. When we move the switch, the switch moves from the green wire to the purple wire and let's assume it initially a perfect contact. The switch moves and touches off the, the second contact on the slider switch uh, and you can see that this means that the pull-up resistor is now active on the green wire which means S bar is equal to 1 and we've now grounded the purple wire so the ground means that we're applying R bar is equal to 0. Again, looking at the truth table as highlighted in red, we can see this gives us a value of 1, 0, which gives us an output of Q is equal to 1. So our output is high, as we would expect. Now let's assume that the switch bounces in the air. So the switch bounces a tiny bit and is now floating in the air, just for a, for a, for a single microsecond. It doesn't matter how long. But at this very fraction of time, this tiny fraction of time, we look at the green and the purple wire. Well, both of these wires are now no longer grounded, so they're both connected to their pull, through their pull up, respective pull-up resistors to 5 volts, which means S bar is equal to 1 and R bar is equal to 1. And this is the most important feature of this circuit, because if we look at the truth table on the right-hand side, we see that when we apply inputs of 1, 1, we simply remember the last state that was currently present. And because that was... Q is equal to 1 or high, it means that we remember that high while the switch is bouncing in the air. It doesn't matter how many times the switch bounces, once it doesn't touch off the green wire again, which is unlikely, once it settles on the purple wire, we now are back into our S, is equal to, S bar is equal to 1 or bar is equal to 0, which gives us an output of Q is equal to 1. So this circuit, if you look at the steps as you followed through, goes from an output of 0 to an output of 1, and even when the switch bounces into the air, it remains and remembers that output of 1 and eventually settles on that output of 1.
So now I'm going to connect this circuit up to the oscilloscope because we will be able then to look at the quality of the output that we're getting. So to do this I'm going to connect channel 2 of my oscilloscope which is the yellow lead. I'm going to connect that into my output, my output pin. Um, I'm going to connect my channel 1 of my oscilloscope uh, to one of, the, one of the pins, one of the outputs of one of the, um, the, the regular switch, one of the noisy bouncy outputs from the switch. And I'm also going to connect my, both of my probes, I'm going to connect their ground pin to the ground in my circuit. So it means now that my, my uh, probes are working off the same reference as the circuit. So now we can test the circuit to see what the quality of the signal is like that we're getting out of our debouncing circuit. So here we have our output that we see in our oscilloscope. You can see red is, the, um, is connected to the switch. Uh, the sliding switch and yellow is connected which is channel is 2 is connected to the output debounce output of our circuit so here I'll, I'll move the switch around a bit you do notice we have a slight voltage drop across the output and that's due to the fact that we're using LS series ICs you can see that at the moment I'm using channel 2 as the trigger and I'm looking for the falling edge so you can see we get what looks like a quite a nice uh, consistent step if we look at the signal but you can see here we're, we're dealing with 250 microseconds per division if I change the time base and get closer you can see that well at 10 microseconds per division you can see that we've got a lovely clean output signal but the you can see the bounce is taking place as we slide the, slide the switch across so in this case here you can see the red is the output from the slider switch and you can see that it's bouncing um, but that the output the, is fully debounced. It's a lovely clean transition on the first falling, on the first major falling edge. So press the button a few more, or slide the button a few more times, and we'll get similar outputs. Uh, slight noise there. Okay, again, it's quite clean. Um, Again, if we zoom in a little bit more, change our time base, you can see that's quite considerable in terms of the this the bouncing that's taking place on the switch. But yet our circuit, and if we're looking at dealing with 100 microseconds, well, 25 microseconds per division, and we slide the switch, you can see it's very clean. Our output is very clean despite the bouncing on our um, on on our switch itself. We might just want to check if we change it to rising edge and we'll still trigger it on channel 2. Channel 2 is when we get our transition. That's our, our clean output. So I'll just go up to rising edge. Oh. I have to switch the... I have to move the switch to measure to the other pole of the switch otherwise I'm not going to get any, any comparison. Sorry, just this noise there. So here you can see another example of where we're... On this case I'm, I've connected to the rising edge so we're looking at the rising edge of the output. I've tri I'm triggering my oscilloscope on the rising edge and you can see here the bouncing that's taking place but the circuit is quite consistent and you can see that we get a consistent output despite that bouncing that takes place and um, the circuit is working very well uh, in this situation as well. If I slide it a few more times uh, again you can see the type of output that we're getting in this case here I've got the opposite way around uh, so that I can see the, uh, the effect of the switch um, so it looks like it's inverting, but I've, I remember I've connected to the other pole of the switch. Again, if we change our time base, you can see that there's a fair bit of noise on our circuit. Now I'm down to 2.5 microseconds, which is a really, really small amount of time. Um, but you can see the effect that we have, the noise that we have on our red channel, which is coming directly from the slider switch. And then you can see that we have a nice clean output from our, uh, from our switch. If we change it to, a, I suppose, a reasonable, if we change it to 500 microseconds per division and slide, uh, you can see the only thing that's very noticeable there is the, is the drop on the output, the voltage drop on the output. So that's my circuit to debounce an SPDT switch, which is a single pole double truss switch, such as the slider switch that we used in this implementation. In the next video, which is linked to here, I will discuss how we can implement a debounce circuit for an SPST switch, such as a momentary push button. Unfortunately, because there's only a single pole, we can't use the same type of configuration and we have to use a configuration such as one where we use a resistive capacitive pair to filter 
the signal and then use something like a Schmidt trigger to clean up the signal completely. So follow this link and you can see that video there.